So I got a lot of things on my mind. My wife asked me, what are you thinking? And I show her this picture. Because it's kind of like, you know, the ADT thing at any point in time. But, but most of the stuff at the moment is, it's about social media. I'm thinking a lot about social media. I'm thinking about um, social networking, that type of stuff. So I, I got a lot on my mind. The thing that I'm really thinking about at the moment is virtual worlds. And I want to get into that a little bit with you because I think that might be the next big, big thing. Twitter's huge at the moment. Johnny's going to talk a little bit about that later on. How many of you are Twitter users? Okay. Okay. So let's get into this a little bit. Jay, people mentioned Jay. Jay is a great friend of mine. And as I was really struggling and wrestling with this, I was on a call with Jay. And Jay said, look, Tony, all you have to do is think about it differently. And this, this I think, is actually one of the most profound statements. It's, it's altered my research. It's the quote of the, it, he said, getting things done requires good connections of both the human and internet kind. Schooling has confused us into thinking that learning was equivalent to pouring content into people's heads. Right? That's the model, isn't it? I live that model. I'm at Duke University. It's more practical to think of our learning as optimizing our networks. I started to think about that. I said, that's really interesting. What if we thought about learning as collective action in optimizing our networks to solve immediate issues? Would that change how we do things? And I submit that it does. Digital natives. This is their world. How many of you have teenagers? OK, what does it look like at 7 o'clock on, 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 on a school day evening? Something like this, right? Truly multitasking. A colleague of mine, Byron Reeves at Stanford, he's a psychologist. You know, he slaps probes on people's frontal lobes and stuff. These people parallel process. They're a different species. No, no, I'm serious. We talk about multitasking. What that means is we have one fat pipe, and we like segment and time slice stuff in, and we get very happy. They just work in parallel. And those of you who have kids, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking It's like, how do you do that? You're, you're taking in the media from the TV, you're having a conversation on the phone, and you're writing a paper. What's up with that? But think about the media that they've been steeped in. It's like, it, it's, we adapt. The reason we're still here and dinosaurs aren't is we adapt. That's what we do. And our brain is adapting to accommodate this info glut. So I'd submit to you, we're the old dogs that need to learn new tricks from them. Because they're organizing as crowds to overcome the info glut. And we're still busy trying to say, open mouth, drink as much, best of luck to you. It's, it's, the model's untenable because the information barrage that's coming at us suggests that you know, doing more faster merely increases the efficiency with which we train poorly. The mechanism's lossy. The mechanism's lossy, and we've got to do things better. So now let's talk about digital natives. Here's what it looks like on a, fr on a Thursday afternoon. There's, uh, let's call her Lisa. Lisa's on her Facebook. She's wanting to watch, um, she's wanting to watch Dancing with the Stars or American Idol, I mean, so, you know, whichever one you want. And, but they have all this homework that's due tomorrow, so they form these little study groups. It's like, okay, Kim, you're pretty good at physics, so you take care of the physics stuff, and Dean, uh, you go ahead and you do the English. Now make sure you change the papers enough so that Dr. Farsnockle doesn't bust us. And um, we'll all meet back after American Idol, and we'll talk about who won, and then we'll divvy out the work. So they're actually creating learning networks, right, to get the work done, to hand in the deliverables. Now, I, on the, on the professor side, I'm offered all this software that says, you know, bust them, right, catch them. But I know, remember the production process? But the algorithms that they're doing to catch, by the time it gets to me, these people have already figured out. They're three steps ahead of us. Why? Because they parallel process, and they move very fast. I was talking to a couple of, couple of students about this, and they said, did you know that cheat and teach are anagrams. I was like, whoa, this is very interesting. OK, now for something completely different. Um, I went to Virginia Tech. And this was a very interesting application of the technology I hadn't seen before. You, I, for those of you who are not from the United States, there was a very unfortunate event where 23 students were killed at Virginia Tech uh, in 07. And, um, it was a really, really difficult time. My, my, I remember I came home and my wife also went to Virginia Tech. We were married at Virginia Tech in that chapel. I got a call from my uncle and I said, wow, I'm watching the news. I saw that chapel. I was at your wedding. You know, is everything OK? It was a really, really difficult time. And um, so, so we had to deal with a lot of stuff. And, and the media just wouldn't get off it. It's like there wasn't another story. So you're going for four days and it's like tragedy and massacre. It's just like waves of media hitting you. It's just not a good place to be. So I was listening to NPR one day coming home from work, and they, they were covering this story. And they said, you know, there, there's a very interesting thing that happened at Virginia Tech today. And here's, here's what it said. They got together. That becomes important later in the story. Um, 
And all of a sudden, the journalists can't get any stories. So what they did was they got on their live journal, Facebook, uh, MySpace pages. They came up with three simple rules. Print out this piece of paper. If a journalist comes, give them the piece of paper, nod your head, and say, thank you very much. We need time to grieve, and walk away. This went viral. The community at Blacksburg, 35,000 people. You know, uh, add another seven, 8,000 people who are residents in Blacksburg. So this, whole, this concept of three simple rules propagated through the social web shuts down the journalists. So then now they have to actually leave because there's no more, nobody, the whole place has climbed up and said, let us move on. The minute the journalists get out of there, where do they go to grieve? They go to those people's Facebook and MySpace pages. Why? Because that's where they hung out. And there was a really moving part in the NPR story where the person at the bottom says, what better place to mourn someone than a place that they themselves built to express who they are and a place where the deceased and his or her friends may have spent a great deal of time. So this person was like really saying, I don't know if I would have been able to deal with this tragedy if this technology wasn't here because it's helping us actually get through the process. You see how they're using this technology different? What I want you to do is think about what could we do with that power for learning? Not training, but learning. Another closer story. Um, those of you who, who are in North Carolina probably know about this, but um, there was a tragic murder in, in Cary, North Carolina, and uh, Nancy Cooper uh, was murdered by her husband. Uh, they were neighbors of ours, and her husband was actually a student of mine. So, so needless to say, we're, we live in a pretty tight community in North Carolina, um, small, small neighborhood, and it was national news, you know, everybody calling, wanting to talk, and stories, and so on and so forth. So it became a very, very difficult time, and it, it went over some period. So she went missing on a, on a Friday, and then there's a whole weekend search on a Saturday, and so on and so forth. But then um, w there was a lot of speculation as to whether it was a husband or not. That caused a big rift between, between the, the, the neighborhood, as you can imagine. Some people were for, some people were against, and so on and so forth. So there was a lot of speculation, and, and one night I just couldn't sleep, and I was on the web, and I, I had done some blogging about our experience because when, when this happened, my wife, again, being the, the social uh, uh, worker that she is, the developmental psychologist that she is, said, you know, these people are really punch drunk. They don't know what's going on. We need to get help in here. We need counselors in here who can explain what grieving is to six-year-olds or what murder is to six-year-olds. We need to uh, have them trained to understand that it's okay if your three-year-old starts biting because they're regressing and that's, that they're picking up your vibes. They may not know exactly what's going on, but they're picking up your vibes. So we needed professional help. So what I was doing was blogging what I was hearing from these expert professionals giving us the close-knit family's guidance and putting it out there. And then other people would write back to me and say, thank you so much. You know, we don't have access to that kind of professional support at this point in time, but we're part of the community too, and we find this very, very interesting. So I was on my blog, and the cool thing about blogs, it's user-generated commentary, is you can see who referred. And I saw this night a whole bunch of uh, referrals from this thing called Web Sleuths. I said, what the hell is that? So of course, I went and I looked. Now there's Web Sleuths, and what they are is user-generated investigation. They're all amateur Sherlock Holmes. And, and I'm going, look at this. And then I had this vision. I had this vision of like Columbo with his cigar sitting in his dark, you know, office with stuff strewn up on the wall. And he's like, how am I ever going to figure this case out? It's so complicated. And I watched it, the facts get organized with volunteer time over the space of 90 minutes. How do your learning strategies accommodate that? Should they? Thank <laughs> you.